What up guys, today I'm going to be talking about GPT-3, uh, which stands for General Purpose Transformer. It's the third version of the GPT uh, series, just released last month by OpenAI. Um, from what I read online, it costs close to $14 million in order to train it, and it is the largest GPT model ever released. What's interesting is this time OpenAI is offering it as an API. That API is not public yet, but it is privately available. And so today I'm going to be sharing 14 really cool things already built on top of GPT-3. This model is unlike anything I've certainly ever seen before. And so today I'm just going to be showing you some really cool stuff I found uh, on the web of real things people have already built on top of it. So to start with, uh, I found that somebody had already built an internet web search engine on top of GPT-3. So let's take a look here. Uh, this is the tweet. Let me let me load the video and so you can see here it has a classic web search engine layout. You got the logo, search box, search, and he's asking a query: When was the Selfish Gene published? Which is a book. And immediately you can see GPT-3 has that fact information already available. You can see it. The Selfish Gene was published in 1976. Now, what's interesting is this is without any explicit training on the model to answer this question, the model just knows. And what's cool as a search concept is and design is it, like there's no page of results. You know, it's just here's the answer, which I thought was pretty cool, pretty simple. And then I guess you can click here and it's it's got the Wikipedia link as well. I'm not sure how that works, if that depends on the model or where it's getting that, but still really cool. Next, I'm gonna be showing you, uh, this is a layout generator, uh, which takes in natural language. So let's pause here, take a look. He's just writing large text that says, welcome to my newsletter and describing a button. And that's all GPT-3 needs in order to generate this HTML code and layout. Uh, so GPT-3 was trained on data from the web. It was trained on code. It was trained, I believe, on the Wikipedia data as well. But what's really cool about this is it's literally translating natural language into layout, code layout, and it wasn't explicitly trained to do so. It's just the model is really powerful. Next, we're going to be taking a look at this is just a photo, but somebody made a, a simple um, uh, tool which basically takes something complex and translates it into an explanation which is sort of simplified like almost like how you would explain to a five-year-old uh, that's the idea uh, and again i imagine when you have access to the api you're simply telling it to simplify this text just in natural language you're not doing any crazy coding uh, to manipulate it to get it to simplify the text it just throughout the process of training it, it can just figure out all these different things because it observes so many patterns uh, next this is a cool uh you know camera based ar application so uh the camera is you know this person's reading a book and as he's reading it gpt3 is generating poetry underneath based on the content of the page Uh, next, you'll see this is just a random user. He has access to the API, and these are the different things he, he accomplished just casually while playing around with it. So he got it to write poetry in Spanish. He got it to rephrase emails less aggressively. He got it to write music in ABC notation. And he even got it to write the start of a book in Spanish. So this is really cool. It's almost like it's like a handy personal assistant which has so many powerful features just right out of the box. Uh, next, so this is somebody who made um, GPT-3 debate with another GPT-3. Uh, essentially, it started off just talking about stocks, but towards the end, I mean, the conversation got kind of 
uh, you know, dystopian and sci-fi where the GPT-3 model is commenting that humans are too emotional. <laughs> and towards the end, an AI can see the future. It can predict the future. It can create an optimal future. Anyways, this is a cool just example of using GPT-3 to just debate and reason. Well, I I'll say re reason loosely, but still, you get the idea. Um, uh, another example is this person built a... Um, uh, this is a tool which could, which takes in natural language description of a math formula and then it generates the corresponding latex that goes with it. And you see here it generated the latex uh, formula or equation based on a natural language description. Again, GPT-3 was not explicitly trained to do this, but throughout the training process, clearly it's picked up all of these really powerful patterns which allows it to do so many interesting things. Uh, next, uh, this person is building something which translates natural language into, I guess, bash commands in Linux. Uh, and so you, you see here, he's just explicitly telling it, create me a file file <coughs> that contains three colors, <laughs> list the files in the directory. Um, again, clearly it was, you know, tracking the code and reading it as it was trained and now it can it probably picked up some bash commands along the way and now it can do these kinds of interesting things. Uh, next we're going to be talking about a Figma plugin somebody built. Uh, it basically uh, takes in natural language and generates a Figma design. Uh, this video is too long but basically he enters a description of what is basically Instagram and uh, GPT-3 within Figma is able to generate it so the full description is an app that has a navigation bar with a camera icon, photos title, and a message icon, a feed of photos with each photo having a user icon, a photo, a heart icon, and a chat bubble icon. And then we can see this is what it creates. All from one natural language description, it's able to generate this. Uh, next, uh, this is somebody who asked GPT-3 to uh, basically generate a religious doctrine uh, based on some of the uh, some of the ways that GPT-3 works, like how it's trained, like how a transformer is trained, which is basically based on predicting the next word in the sequence at a huge scale. And so these are some of the rules within this religious doctrine. So words are things. Correctness is the beginning of sanctity. To achieve it is to be rewarded. I mean, these are like, you know, pretty uh, philosophical statements. Um, and you'll also notice, like, this is automatically generated by GPT-3. It's a pretty impressive generation. Uh, it seems plausible. It seems, you know, to follow the rules of English and punctuation and grammar. Um, this could probably pass as, as something made by a human. It even as a, a I would even say this fits the tone of a religious doctrine as well for, for some kind of, you know, secret crazy cult or something like that. Uh, very impressive. Uh, next, somebody turned, uh, basically, it's like a reverse SQL to natural language tool. So it basically, you give it an SQL statement and it will generate it into a natural language kind of question. Uh, very cool. I, I can imagine GPT. GPT-3 being used a lot in, in dashboards and stuff just to, in the future, just to quickly uh, query data and get back simple responses uh, about the data. Next, uh, somebody was able to build a functioning React app by just simply describing it to GPT-3. Uh, a button that says add $3 and a button that says withdraw $5 then show me my balance. So then he clicks generate. And you can see here, it's not only generated the layout, but it's able to actually do the math and gives the final output as well. So again, he just gave it a description and it's functionally working and the design wise it's working as well. It generated it entirely in React for him instantly. Wow. Uh, next, uh, he was able to even get it to generate the Google homepage. So take a look at this. He's simply writing the Google logo. 
He's describing a search box that looks incorrectly spelt. I think GPT-3 is going to be fine with that too. Some buttons, two buttons. Wow. So Google, it was able to grab the Google logo. It was able to uh, create the search box and the two buttons. And now it looks like he's even adjusting the padding in between the buttons in natural language. And you can see the outline. There's the two buttons right there. Really impressive stuff. Uh, lastly, this is a cool uh, camera-based application. So this user's taken a photo of a nutritional label and GPT-3 is gonna parse the ingredients. Uh, it's gonna assign an emoji, I guess, to every single one of these. Or, or sorry, every single one of these, these are the ingredients down here. And I guess it's even just gonna give a thumbs up or thumbs down if that particular ingredient is healthy or un unhealthy. And you can see here the cane sugar is automatically got it down and GPT-3 is generating a quick description of it as well. Um, uh, so altogether, that's uh, pretty much uh, all 14 that I had to share. Uh, the key idea is, again, that uh, GPT-3 is the largest model ever built. It's really impressive. And one of the most impressive things about it is it's just observed so many patterns and has made so many predictions throughout the training process that it's able to do so many things out of the box. And what's also interesting is, is clearly you're able to just give it natural language very casually, almost the way you would speak to a person. And it's able to go off and do stuff uh, with what you've entered, things that it wasn't explicitly trained to do, like generating summaries, like generating lo layouts, grabbing logos. Um, these are all just the uh, examples of how powerful the model is. And I'm really excited. These are 14 things that I just found uh, with the limited API access that's available. It's going to be crazy to see where GPT-3 will go when the API becomes publicly available and maybe even commercially available as well, right? So imagine various companies also using it as well, either in their back-end code, front-end code for various parts of their application. Uh, it's going to be really exciting. So... Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to check out the stuff with GPT-3. Uh, if you like this video, please make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, and also my, my email is just in the description. So if you're working on something pretty cool with GPT-3 uh, and you, you'd love to share or you think it'd be, uh, it's, it's pretty cool, then send it my way and I'd be happy to talk about it as well. Uh, and I'm also personally looking forward to trying to get uh, GPT-3 access as well. So if I work on anything with GPT-3, I'm also going to be sharing it here. So make sure you subscribe so you can follow along. And uh, you two will probably just be blown away with how powerful uh, GPT-3 is and all the different possibilities. Anyways, uh, thanks so much for watching. Thank you.